emotion that I felt in the crowd. It was probably the most special thing about it. Like even when I walked out there for Ray and Don's match, you could feel it. It's weird. It was like a like a humidity in the air, but it was just just a, a ball of emotion that everybody was feeling and wanting a conclusion. So it's it's awesome. That's extra gratifying for the performers when we get to do that for our fans. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live taping of Out of Character at the LA Convention Center. It's WrestleMania 39 week, give it up! Now we've already gotten through one night of WrestleMania. We got one more, but to hold you over until then, we've got the one, the only, Damian Priest here. Give it up for Damian Priest. We were just talking about it. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling it a little because I was partying last night. Were you guys celebrating? Of course. I mean, uh, my name is Damian Priest. I celebrate. It's what I do. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I asked Rhea what she was going to do to celebrate after her big win last night. And she was like, I'm just going to probably like, eat and go to sleep. And I feel like that didn't really happen. No, no, she did. Okay. I celebrated for her. <laughs> you made it up for her. Good, yeah. good. Uh, you know, you're a wrestling fan for a long time, obviously. Uh, when you come here to WrestleMania and you see all this stuff, does it bring you back to your fan days when you just were a fan like all these people watching the show? Yeah. <laughs> Mania the whole week is, is such a special feeling for me because it's, it, again, like you said, it, it reminds me of what it was when I was on the other side. Uh, and I've never lost that. I love every aspect of this business and going around town, seeing all the posters, seeing the store, uh, everywhere is all wwe out. Like, I mean, it's awesome. And meeting people from all around the world who share in the same love for this business that I do. And it's, it's special. It's awesome. And I love it. That's actually one of my favorite parts of WrestleMania week, too, is when you meet the people from out of the country and you meet all these people from different countries and you're like, it really brings into perspective how global what you guys do is, I think. Yeah, that's something I forget. We, I did a, a meet and greet the other day and people were from New Zealand, you know, obviously the UK, Singapore, and this is just wild that we have that reach and we connect with people from all around the world to that level that they come all the way to LA for WrestleMania. Love WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah, give it up for WrestleMania week where you get to meet cool people, right? Yeah, I've met two people from Qatar who listened to the podcast and they weren't even together. They were like two different people from Qatar and I was like, wow, that's wild. I was like, how long of a flight was that? You came all the way out here? But I mean, that's people's passion for wrestling when they, when they, do, you know, when they get to do that and be around all these people and especially for a weekend like this. Now that it's two week, uh, two night event, I think that it really becomes even more of a party. You know, everyone's gonna party. You get two nights of wrestling. There's there's the Hall of Fame. There's SmackDown. There's there's Raw after Mania, and it really just it's just a fun week. You know, to be a wrestling fan. Yeah, I, I love that uh, it it is WrestleMania week. It's not just WrestleMania Day um, because there's so many activities and you know just different things to do that circle the business and you know and everybody comes together and has fun with it. It's it's my favorite week of the year. Yeah. Did you ever go to a WrestleMania when you were just a fan? I went to WrestleMania 20 when Undertaker returned at the Garden. Hell yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So I, that, that's probably one of my favorite events that I have attended, for sure. Who'd you go to that with? Uh, some buddies, Some high school buddies. Yeah. Actually, my friend Charlie, the one that uh, played me to the ring at Halloween Havoc in NXT. So he, we've been friends since high school. So he, we used to always go to shows together back in the day. So something I thought was really cool about you that I've just kind of seen from afar is the past two, pay well, Royal Rumble and then this pay-per-view, I was lucky enough to be backstage doing work. And both times, it's been so cool for me to see how happy you have been for Rhea both times. I've, been, I've just happened to be there both times when you ran into each other after her wins. And, you know, last night, there, it was just like this emotional moment between the two of you where you guys were hugging and doing your high five thing, but it wasn't for cameras or anything. And it really is awesome to see just how proud you are of your best friend. Uh, yeah, the homie, uh, Rhea. We've, obviously everybody knows that we became friends in NXT and we've stayed close ever since. She's like my little sister and so happy and proud. And I, I legit got a little emotional last night. I just. Because seeing how hard she's worked and, you know, she's been through a lot and being away from home, away from her family. I mean, a lot of us sacrifice, but not to that level. I mean, her family is literally on the other side of the planet uh, and doesn't and goes years without seeing them. And for somebody who grew up very close knit with the family, that's that's hard. And, uh, you know, 
and but she muscles through literally and uh, keeps working hard and, and, and never stops striving for more. And it, it's really gratifying on my end to witness it, to be a part of it, uh, and, and share in that enjoyment that she's feeling right now. I'm so proud of her. Yeah, because I'm sure, you know, another person could have been like, oh, well, I'm not in the title match at WrestleMania and been a little, like, sour or whatever inside. But you can just see full joy from you when the two of you guys are together. I saw that emotion in you, and, I, and you know, I saw her parents, too, at, at the show, and they were so proud of her. And it was just to see her growth from when she started to where she's gone to now is just so impressive to see. I was talking with someone before here about when you get to see someone's career progression – it really is, it makes you care about them more. It makes you want to see them succeed. And so we as fans have seen that, but I imagine it's even greater for you since you've been right beside her the whole time. No, yeah, and you bring up a good point. Uh, yesterday, I would say early in the afternoon, uh, I'm in the arena, it's empty. I'm just looking around in the stands and seeing this massive stadium and seeing, the, you know, they're rehearsing sounds. So I'm seeing the, all the entrance videos and stuff. And I did feel a little something, you know, because I didn't have my own match. Uh, and naturally, I'm a competitor. I'm, you know, I, I want my own moment too. So I, I did feel something. But and I told Ray, I mean, excuse me, I told Tom and Rhea uh, at the end of the night. I hugged them both and I said, you know what? Whatever I was feeling earlier, I, I don't even remember because I am so happy right now for the both of you. And I, I was just all smiles and and just, you know, ecstatic to like I said, thank you for letting me be a part of your journey. Um, so all that feeling of you know me went out the window and I was just happy for them. Did you guys enjoy seeing Rhea win the title last night? How great was that match, right? So good, right? Such a good match. I think you will get to have a big match very soon. I, you know, last night, Dom, he has his match with Ray. Bad Bunny gets involved. You have history with Bad Bunny. You're beside Dom now. Uh, what did you think about all of that with Bad Bunny getting involved in that match? I think his emotions got the better of him. Look, I get it. He's a fan of Ray's, and I used to be a fan of Ray's, you know, until I found out, you know, he wasn't much of a father. But, <laughs> but uh, no, I, you know, I, conversations are needed to be had, but um, I, we're, we're, we're good. It's just a matter of, you know, him understanding, look, I, I, I don't think you get what's happening here. You know, just got to smarten him up a little bit, and Bad Bunny should be good to go. I don't think Bad Bunny is going to fall into that and believe that Ray's a deadbeat dad. I feel like he has too much of a love for Ray Mysterio. Well, it's not necessarily about what he believes in, in, in the end. It's just got to explain to him the situation of, you know, we're boys. Like, you got to stay on this side of the tracks and don't worry about the other side. And, and um, you know, don't let your emotions get the better of you like you did at WrestleMania. So getting involved... Uh, probably not the wisest decision, but, you know, I'll let him know, and it's, it's just a matter of, it's a learning experience for him. Well, there is a pay-per-view coming up in Puerto Rico, though. I assume you want to be part of that. That's the match ahead that I, I don't know the match you'll have there, but I would assume that, you know, you didn't wrestle, you're not wrestling this weekend, but if you were to wrestle at Backlash in Puerto Rico, that it would kind of make up for it in some way. That definitely would make up for it, <laughs> you know, uh, when you, wherever you're from, whether you know, it's a different country or just your town, and you get to do something special there in front of your family, your friends, and people who are proud to say that they're from the same place you are, it's extra special. So going back to Puerto Rico um, and having a you know, premium live event that hasn't been done since, what, all like 05, I think? Um, it's, it's wild to think that this is happening. You know, I, I've thrown comments a lot <laughs> since I've been here in the last few years, like, hey, any opportunities to do something in Puerto Rico, <laughs> you know? Hey, we should probably do something out there. There's a lot of fans there, you know, and just keep pushing and pushing, and finally, you know, the decision was made for Backlash and, and SmackDown, which is awesome, you know, so two televised events back-to-back, -back and it, it's, it's awesome where the company is right now, that this is what we're doing, you know, we just did, you know, Clash at the Castle in Wales, and backlash in Puerto Rico coming up and then we got you know money in the bank in London like it's awesome like we're moving you know <laughs> we're moving we're moving well we talked about the international thing the global effect of wrestling and the fact that it doesn't it doesn't just have to be Wrestlemania where everyone comes to you guys now that you're actually going to some of those countries more now is pretty awesome yeah and for me I mean I 
maybe the actual act of traveling I'm not a huge fan of, like getting on a plane and sitting like this, you know, <laughs> my long legs. But being in, in different countries, in different areas, different cultures, uh, I, that's actually one of my favorite parts of the gig, um, interacting with different people and hearing different accents and seeing how people are so proud from where they come from and their backgrounds. Uh, that's one of, by far one of my favorite parts of the gig. And so getting to travel to, to, for work, but also enjoy myself. And again, we all know I'd like to enjoy myself. So, uh, and I get to do it in, in different areas with different people. That's, it's a, that's a great feeling. And, and I love that they feel it too. You know, I, I think fans enjoy us coming to their neck of the woods and, you know, Parting with the locals. <laughs> Give it up for that, right? I, uh, yeah, last time at last year's WrestleMania, I met uh, a group of women from Puerto Rico who run a fan page of yours. And I, and I think that I feel, I think that, and then I told them that I'm part Puerto Rican and they were like, oh my God, like no way. And so then they were like, now they're fans of mine. I still talk every, you know, every once in a while on social media. And I think that uh, that Puerto Rican love is strong for sure for you. Yeah, and that's, that's what I mean, you know, you, you get to meet people from all over and then you, you build almost relationships and, and it's neat, you know, and then and, and you have a bond, you know, with, and it's this business, right? So, you know, you, I see the crew here and um, you guys are all and enjoying and, and laughing and smiling together. That's, you know, that's unique and, and special. It's like going to a, any sporting event and cheering the hometown team um, and then you meet strangers, but you come together for the love of the same thing. Uh, so, and being that for me, this one has to do with Puerto Rico, it's a little extra. So what did you think about Judgment Day when it was under edge? What, what, what was your thoughts on that? Because it was a little more of a dark, kind of like a cult vibe versus now where you guys are just kind of like party people, I guess. Like you guys just kind of like go out and party. You're like cool people now, but it's less dark as it was. Oh, so well, well, I was always cool people. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. But... You know, the, the character, you, you, you kind of reverted back to kind of like what you had done on the indies a little bit to your punishment style stuff. So did you like that or do you prefer the way the group is now? So for me, I, I like moving. I like evolving, you know, and when we first formed the Judgment Day and, and the idea was we we're going to be a little darker. Um, for me, that's right up my alley. You know, my idol was The Undertaker. I... I clearly love skulls, the dark, you know, the weird, the odd, you know, the not normal. That's like my thing. And obviously Rhea's like that too. Yes. And Finn Balor knowing his demon side is like that. And Dom is out there too. So like with Edge, you know, when we first formed, yeah, it was about that. And to me, that was, I was like, this is cool. I get to have fun with this, but, but I get to have fun portraying something, not being something, you know? And I think once, we got rid of that limitation, uh, and we were just able to just vibe and just be ourselves. And, you know, the chains were off. Like, when in our entrance, we don't have to just walk in line. I could go that way and just act the fool, and nobody cares. Like, when we're on, when we're on you know, speak, cutting promos in the ring, we don't need to just stare at the, at the camera talking like this. We're going to move around and yell at people and say rise, you know, and, and whatever else. Uh, and we were just having fun, and that's the main thing. Like, we're having a blast in everything we do, and when you see us laughing, that's a real laugh. You know, see us smiling, that's a real smile. Um, because we're just enjoying ourselves and, and making the most of anything that we get to do together. Like, we legit have become a close-knit group, and uh, we love each other like family. Yeah, you know, I remember in an interview we did in the past once, you talked about how... At, at one point in NXT, things started to kind of click for you as kind of the way you are now, less of the dark side. And I think it was more of that portraying someone versus yeah. being something. And you're back to kind of like more being something now. Uh, and I think that it does feel, it seems more natural for you on camera to kind of like be yourself, or a version of yourself on camera that can kind of do all those things. Well, it's always easier. I mean, we know ourselves better than anybody else. So like, I know me. Um, but I don't know somebody else that I'm trying to portray. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. So it's always easier that way. And funny enough that around the same time that I kind of found myself in NXT was when I was in a feud with Finn Balor. And, and that's when it, I'm, that's actually when we did that interview. And that, I remember you telling me that's kind of when things started to click for you the other way. That guy gets me, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, 
going from there, then, you know, on Raw, when we had the Judgment Day and then knowing that he was going to come in and we got to work together again, but now instead of on opposite sides, we're on the same side, but it's the same thing. There's a connection there and like we just understand each other and whether we're against or with, uh, it works. Like we, we have a chemistry that, that goes well and it flows and, and Rhea, obviously that was an easy one because we were always homies. Dom was actually the only one that we, I wasn't sure about because I didn't really know him that well. You know, I knew him as Ray's kid, that's it. Uh, and then now we're like best friends, you know, which is awesome. Like we're always together. Even when we're back home and we're off the road, we're hanging out. So it's pretty neat that like we've all gotten this close um, and it's just not on camera. Off camera, we probably are even closer. I think that makes the best teams when they actually are friends who hang out off screen. It makes such a big difference for their on screen chemistry because they're actually friends. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, you're not faking anything. You're just being. And, and same thing with, you know, character development and anything else. When you have people who genuinely like being around each other, it's going to show and the audience can connect to that. You have, people know what it feels like to like someone and being around that person. So that's an easy get, you know? Yeah, it's interesting how I feel like on paper you wouldn't have thought that Dom leaving Ray would have helped him grow so much as a performer, but... Un, you know, with you guys in the Judgment Day, he really has had such a progression of everything he does where it's different than what he was doing before and the crowd just loves to boo him. You guys like booing Dom, right? Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, Dom, he went from being a star with Ray, a star in the Judgment Day, to being his own star. It's Dominic Mysterio now. You know, he's his own thing. Uh, and just like Rhea, it's awesome to be a part of it and you know right there you know i'm seeing this firsthand you know i'm watching him from this distance just glow and just do his thing and you know when he's in the ring and holding the ring with the mic and the crowd's going nuts i, I can't help but smile in the background you know and like i said it was all real like i used to try to hold in smiles and and you know facial reactions because i felt like my character had to be a certain way and but not anymore now Something makes me laugh. I'm just going to laugh because it's funny, you know? Uh, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> Rhea, Finn, and Dom do that a lot. We, I mean, we're always laughing and always cracking up, and usually at somebody else's expense, but uh, we have a good time. Dom's entrance last night was one of the highlights of the entire show. When he came out in that van, I died. Yeah, as soon as the video started and it showed him in prison, yes. I lost it, lost it, <laughs> yes. lost it. And then when he when he when they opened the door and he was just in shackles waiting to get out, I just I whoever came up with whoever's idea that was, just give that person a raise. I, I have no idea where that came from, who, but incredible. I, I mean, I was in tears laughing so much by the end of the video, and then then he actually has to make his entrance, uh, which was also awesome, so over the top. But it's mania, and that's what we do. Uh, and very fitting. I, I've never seen Dom look tougher than he did in that video package. <laughs> um, in what ways have you noticed his growth as a performer? Like, what, what have you seen that he's gotten so much better at in just the time that he's been with you guys, Dom? His timing, his pacing, his demeanor. Like, those are the main things. His wrestling ability, you know, it, that's fine. Like, he, he knows how to do moves. Uh, he's good in the ring. That, that's not a, an issue, but it's his demeanor now. His, the way he carries himself. Like, he went from being basically a good hand to being a superstar. You know, like, I could see him going, getting in the ring with anybody. You know, and, and you get it. Like, okay, he's in the ring with that person because he's Dominic Mysterio. He deserves to be in the ring, not he's there because of his dad or because of the judgment thing. Um, and that's the main thing, it's the way he carries himself and has nothing to do with anybody else other than himself. He, he did that on his own, and of course, it's easier when you're surrounding yourself with people who carry themselves a certain way, you know, and for all of us, a guy like Finn Balor, for instance, you know, you could learn a lot just by watching him and not saying anything, just watch him, uh, watch him walk, you know, watch him look, look into the camera, you know, watch right before he speaks how his demeanor is, and, and I think that's something that Dom has picked up a lot as well. And now when he goes out there, he looks comfortable, like he owns the ring, you know, when he's in it. So uh, it's a blessing to watch. 
Yeah, Finn Balor, since joining the Judgment Day, has been amazing because, you know, we saw the babyface Finn, smiley guy Finn. We saw the tweener that he did in NXT, but him getting to go full, just bad guy, just feeling himself, doing what he wants, it, it's so entertaining to watch on screen. Yeah, I, I feel like before Dom got arrested and did prison Dom, I think we saw prison Finn for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll tell you what, he, he's a funny guy. So we're in the back and he does these things. He puts on the bandanas over his face and puts on sunglasses. And he's like, hey, mate, look at me. You know, like, and, and just cracks us up. Like he's excited to like be a clown and, and like, you know, but he's also like, he does it like in a way because he knows he, it's entertaining to us. So we make each other laugh first, and then we make the world laugh, you know? Yeah, like when he was mad about his birthday, when he was beating someone up, that cracked me up. Yes, oh man, I forgot about that. Really good. <laughs> it's on my birthday, yeah. Yeah, on my so, birthday? So stuff like that, and, and he's doing that because he knows we're going to hear him. And, you know, and it's kind of like, did, we, did you laugh? <laughs> you know? He seems like the type that wants to pop, try to make everyone else laugh while he's being as serious and angry as possible. Yeah, we've picked up a lot of those habits. Sometimes maybe they're not the best habits, but we, having fun, I guess, is never a bad one. So, and we try to have as much fun as possible. I'm really looking forward to the Hell in a Cell match. What about you guys? You guys stoked for that Hell in a Cell match tonight? I think potential to steal the show. Yeah, uh, hands down, easily. Uh, that's my money, is that that match is going to steal the show. I mean, you have Edge going to back to his darker ways, and you have the demon, Finn Balor, inside Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania. Um, and you're talking about this, this rivalry or this situation with the Judgment Day. I mean, we started at WrestleMania last year. You know, Edge and I started it all. So full circle, one year later, now Finn Balor, you know, uh, and Edge just... It's got to be done, you know. It, it has to end at some point, and I, I think in a Hell in a Cell, I think we should finally say goodbye, you know, to this situation. Yeah, I mean, the whole year cap on it definitely makes sense year to year there. But it is impressive to me how many long-term storylines have are culminating this weekend. I think for a long time we as wrestling fans would say, oh, I want more long-term storytelling and didn't get it. And, and if you look at, like, the two cards – a lot of the matches are the culmination of lots of stories, and I think that it's very, it's very satisfying as a fan to watch something like that. Yeah, because it's, it's that build, right? Like, I think of, like, um, the Avengers, right? Like, it took so many years to that finally come to the end game, you know? So, for us, it's something similar, you know? When, you, when people can get invested in something, and it's not just one day to the next, it's over time, and really connect with personalities and, uh, and get emotionally invested... Um, and then still not give it, and still not come to the conclusion because WrestleMania is usually our reset. So uh, for it to make it this far, st that story, you know, Ray and Dom's story, uh, it, it's like we've been going at this for a while with them, you know, and, and it's kind of neat to see, like, finally we get, we're at this point where we can say, okay, let's pull the trigger. It's over or it's happening, you know. Uh, it's exciting, I think, for everybody, you know, not just us. Um, and we feed off of that energy, too. I mean, the, the reaction, the crowd reactions last night for the entrances alone, you know, forget the match. The matches were great. Rhea versus Charlotte killed it. I mean, I feel like that's going to be the match of the weekend regardless. But uh, And then Ray and Dom did their thing, too. And the, the emotion that I felt in the crowd, it was probably the most special thing about it like even when i walked out there for ray and don's match you could feel it it's weird it was like a like a humidity in the air but it was just just a ball of emotion that everybody was feeling and wanting a conclusion so it's it's awesome that that's extra gratifying for the performers when we get to do that for our fans yeah i can only imagine and you know before we wrap up here because I, I have shorter time than usual um triple h is someone who there we go. Wolfpack. Get it. Uh, <laughs> Triple H is someone who really seems to understand your character. You know, you told me during that interview about where you, when we talked about Finn and you and how it helped you to transform who, how you think about things. Um, and it's showed now with the way that he's pushing Judgment Day as well. What's your relationship like with him and what do you, what do you think about working with him? Oh, it's great. Yeah, and, and you're correct. He, he, 
you know, there's a different understanding with certain people. You know, first of all, he gets just about anyone in this business because he's a wizard at this business. I think I know a lot. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think I know it all, but I think I know a good, good amount of, of, about this business. Then I have a conversation with Triple H, and I feel like I don't know anything. I'm like, what? Send me back to NXT, man. I need to learn something. Because <laughs> uh, he's just so good, and, like, and, and it's great. But with me, particularly, I mean, we're two metalheads that like chains and biker stuff, and, you know, same type of, you know, like just everything. We just have so many similar likes. Um, that we could just have conversations that have nothing to do with wrestling. So he gets the person. Uh, I also am a big fan of the showmanship uh, of what we do. Like, I, I was always big on entrances. Even when I worked with Ring of Honor, I, I made sure, like, that was a thing. I was like, hey, I want my entrance to be cool. Like, I don't want to just walk to the ring. Like, we have to do stuff. I need lighting and smoke or something. Uh, and it was great to work with Hunter with, on that because he has the same passion, clearly, for that part of the spectacle, right? So getting to talk to him and him actually listening and, and being invested in what I'm saying and he getting excited as well because we're gonna create something special. Uh, that's neat to have that with your boss, you know, because as much as it's Triple H, the game, the King of Kings, but he's still the boss, right? But he still has that other side that he's one of the boys. It's a good combo because he, he, nobody treats him like one of the boys. He's still the boss that has that respect, but in return, we get that understanding as it's one of us it's a good balance that he has you talk about how sometimes you'll talk to him and you're like oh i don't know anything about wrestling is there one of those instances in your mind that you can think of where he said something to you about wrestling or the business that you went just like oh, i can't believe i never thought of it that way before yeah it, well it goes every week you know when we're, we're just talking about a segment and he's like but why don't you just do it this way? And I'm like, why wouldn't I just think of that? You know, it's like so obvious. But one of the main ones that goes back to me is when I was in NXT and uh, I don't remember who I had just finished working, uh, but I get to the back and he just goes, look, I'm gonna give you the same advice that Undertaker told me. He goes, when you figure out how to be yourself in front of the camera, you're gonna make a lot of money in the business. And then I just stood there, I was like, thank you. And he goes, I know you have no idea what I'm saying right now. And, he go, and I was like, nope. <laughs> he was like, how could, how could I not know how to be me? Uh, but there was something to that. I think I was, at the time, pretending to be a version of myself that I thought people wanted to see. Um, and I didn't get it at the time. It wasn't until after my match with Finn Balor that it was it clicked. And when I got to the back, he goes, that's the guy I was looking for. He goes, from now on, only be that guy. And Sean was right there, too. And Shawn Michaels was like, I don't ever want to see you revert backwards. Like, that, this and forward. And I said, okay, you got it, boss, you know? And that was cool, but that was one of those things that when he said it at the time, I was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, I, I didn't get it, but till it clicked. And then he explained to me after that, same thing happened with him and The Undertaker, where he was like, what's he talking about, <laughs> you know? And then sure enough, one day everything clicks, and then he was like, thank you for the advice, I get it now. How long does that hair take? <laughs> Actually, so I, I uh, my hairstylist now does it uh, a easier way, so it's way faster than doing like the regular braids. These are just like ropes, basically. So the idea is to make them look like ring ropes. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so it, it took a couple hours. That takes a couple hours. Yeah, but I usually don't do it one sitting. So like I, I did it the other night. I went, did like an hour, then showed up the next morning, did like an hour, took a break, came back, and then we finished it. And they kind of look like tassels because it's like yeah. the ring ropes. That makes sense. Yeah, that's. That's a long time. I feel like that's a, that's a lot of effort to put into your hair. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sitting, there, <laughs> sitting there for hours is really not my favorite thing to do, but I feel like I kind of pigeonholed myself into a, a look and vibe that now I'm like, I, when I, every time I'm like, oh, man, I got to sit and do this now. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, on the plus, it's usually in the hair and makeup area. It's, it's all the women, so I don't mind it so much. <laughs> That could be worse, I guess. Could be worse. Could be worse. Uh, all right, well, I'm going to go to my final uh, rapping segment here. It's a segment I call the finishing move. Uh, we've done it once, so i got to switch it up a little here. You want me to give you my finisher? No, no. Razor's Edge or South of Head and Choke Slam? Oh, one? God. Razor's Edge? Oh, God. Edge? That sounds terrifying. <laughs> okay, let's get out of here. All right, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's your least favorite move to be on the receiving end of? Man, there's a lot of those. <laughs> Let's hear them. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, that slam dunk thing that Bobby Lashley does, 
they grab you by your stomach and just, oh my God. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Edge Spear is not great. Uh, I, what, the first time I got caught with a spear, I thought everything was destroyed inside. Uh, so that one's definitely not a great one. Um, in general, any bomb is not great for me. I'm long, I'm tall, so it just feels like I'm coming down from that much higher. I don't really like heights either, so anything like that, you know. But I would say that slam dunk thing that he does is pretty brutal. Uh, and then aside from that, anything, I mean anything else that Seamus does. <laughs> Yeah, he said that, he, we had him here yesterday, and he said that he loves when he sees someone see his name next to theirs and just get this look of like, oh, man, this is going to hurt tonight. Yeah. Oh, he, he loves that. And then he, so I'll, I'll give you a cool story, a, a little behind the scenes on something at the Rumble. So I'm watching the Rumble before I, I come out, and I see Drew and Seamus just wailing on everybody. And everybody trying to do, any, do something to them, and then the both of them just teaming up and just laying heavy leather on everybody. Theory, Dominic, poor Dom. Uh, I saw Gargano taking shots. And I know I'm coming out. And the people that are standing are Gunther, Drew McIntyre, and Sheamus. I, I don't know. I just psyched myself up in the back, and I came in. If you watch, I don't know if they ever hit me once. Really? I came in on fire and just hit them all as hard as I can. <laughs> when we got to the back, and Seamus was like, hey, man. <laughs> he was like, I, I think, you know, because of our experiences, I, I think you hit too hard now. <laughs> <laughs> Seamus of all people Seamus saying that. Seamus said that. And Drew come up. He was like, yeah, as soon as you came in and you hit me right in the face with an elbow, I thought, I was like, oh, and then you caught me with another one? I was like, oh, he's, he's on fire. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I don't, I honestly kind of blacked out a little bit. I don't even remember what happened in there. <laughs> I just didn't want to get hit by those guys. I can't wait to go back and watch that now because I feel like it's going to add so much. <laughs> it's oh, going to be yeah. way funnier watching it now. Yeah, and I'm just, I didn't come in. I didn't do any moves. <laughs> I just <laughs> threw potatoes. That was it. <laughs> just got to throw warning shots to everybody that you're not messing around. Everyone. Uh, and lastly, we'll end it with, what's the most memorable time that you've taken someone else's finishing move? Ooh, man, that one's rough. Um, hmm. You know, when, when you get to obviously work with your friends, sometimes that makes it a, a little bit more special. Um, so, you know, let's say working with Riddle was cool. Um, but... I guess because of the moment, too, you know, Raw in Toronto versus Edge, not happy I lost, but just the moment and watching it back and seeing the crowd, you know, taking the Destroyer, then taking a spear and seeing, like, that was like my Attitude Era moment as a fan, watching everybody jumping up and down, screaming, going nuts for Austin giving a stunner or something. That was my version of that, even though I was on the receiving end, seeing everybody just freak out. I mean, I, I've never gotten beat up while also having goosebumps. <laughs> it's the, that was a wild feeling. I don't recommend it, but uh, what a wild feeling. So uh, if I had to take a move that I don't like taking uh, and lose, it ha that was the one. Uh, that was probably one of the coolest uh, moments for me in a losing effort. Everyone, give it up for Damian Priest. Thank you. Make sure you guys go follow WWE on Fox on social media. That's where you can find out of character stuff. Make sure you follow the out of character podcast feed and the WWE on Fox YouTube channel as well. All right, that's it. I'm done. Officially tapping out for now until next time. I'm Ryan Satin. This was Damian Priest, and this was out of character. <laughs>